Strauss and Company will be offering a dedicated online sale which will run from the 6th of October to the 13th of October. We will be auctioning the Andrew Newell collection of weapons and Vivian Marston collection of cutlery. Both Andrew and Vivian were long-standing clients of Strauss and Company and I asked Andrew to write an introduction to his collection in his own words. When I was asked to write an article about my weapons collection, I was flummoxed. I'd never really thought about it. I had to delve back to my childhood memories. My father had collected lots of flint stones and an old hand axes over the years. He used to record all his findings. He also collected old Khoisan bows and arrows, which caught my fascination as a small boy. I think this sparked my interest in collecting weaponry. I used to scour all the second-hand shops, buying what I could afford. In those days, there was very little interest in or value put on daggers, spears, etc. So I used to buy as much as I could manage on my meager salary. After my mother passed away in 1972, I joined my father in the antiques trade and the auction rooms became the source of many of my acquisitions. I also remember the time when a young dealer just starting up came to our home and purchased some weapons from my father. He and his sons are now one of the world's most respected dealers in arms and armors and based in London, Peter Feiner. My now deceased partner frowned upon me collecting and displaying these dangerous objects as she called them. I was left with no alternative but to store them away in two Zanzibar trunks at the bottom of my bed. I still did acquire the occasional dagger and sword but into the trunks they went. I was involved in a serious car accident just over a year ago. This was a wake up call to me about the fragility of our lives. It was after I recovered from this event that I decided it was time for me to part ways with my weapon collection. I'm only a temporary custodian of these objects in any case. I enjoy putting together the collection in catalogue form. I appreciate the objects for what they are like. Collection of Crees, lot 28 to lot 33. Each of these elegant daggers has been made by hand by skillful craftsmen and highly skilled metal forgers who use simple tools to make these wonderful blades. Lot 29, the scarce Majapet Kari, is a case in point. The single metal piece depicts a finely chiseled, emaciated figure. The fine wavy watered blade has dark and late light shades. The top of the blade is decorated with chiseled lions sitting in profile. The numerous designs of the hilt and blades of the Cree depict different regions. One wonders how many miles across the searing, hot, dangerous deserts on camelback some of the Jambaya lots, 18 to 23, would have travelled, worn proudly in their belts of their owners. Lot 35, the three Canary Island knives, were of unknown origin to me, but a lot of searching eventually led me to discovering their intriguing history. Two have names and dates of 1896 punched into the blades. Together in this lot is a small prostitute stiletto knife, delicately made with a sharp pointed blade which has pierced dagger motifs on it. One would assume made for a classy lady of the night. My favorite piece in the collection is lot 34, the Sri Lankan Pia Kieta. The strangely shaped dagger would have been made for a person of high status. It has a delicately carved ivory and silver handle and a finely worked blade. The blade has unusually long scrolled piercing and decorative work. On a totally different track is lot 40, the three Bowie knives by Joseph Rogers that were made for the American market. To me, these are powerful symbols of the Wild West. They are large utility knives made for the domestic use as well as hunting and fighting. Lot 41, the Civil War period folding knife is a scarce example of Americana. It does have some damage though. 
Plot 1, The Danish Sword, is an intriguing piece. The gilt metal grip has pierced decoration with suns and a sparring laurel wreath. The top section of the blade is glued with a gilt display of the Danish royal sapphire, including a tiny elephant. Marked near the cross guard on either side is the word Vyat. The sword would have been commissioned to commemorate a special event or occasion. Lot 2 is a fine Mameluke sword made by B. Johnston of St. James, cutler to His Majesty. The ivory on the grip is decorated with PK work. The officer's sword shows the scars of battle on its blade and is lacking possibly one quillion, a true fighting weapon. There are other swords and daggers that are also worthy of mention, but I have to draw the line somewhere. Soon my collection will find new homes and will hopefully be displayed to be appreciated and not confined to the attractive Zanzibar trunks. The circle of custodianship will continue.